This conference will now be recorded. Okay, Bob, you can get started whenever you're ready. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Susie. Okay, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, for joining in today. Uh, my name is Bob D'Amico from Vitrick. I'm the Eastern Regional Sales Manager. Uh, as you can see, I've got my phone number uh, <clears throat> at the bottom of the screen there. Um, my email address is is on this screen. And I'll put this screen up. You'll notice as the uh, mute, uh, mute your microphone. It looks like everyone's done that. Uh, it just makes the um, makes the presentation go a lot smoother if everyone's got their mics muted. Uh, the chat bubble is up there, so if you have any questions during the um, <clears throat> during the presentation, please feel free to enter the uh, the chat room where the little bubble is, and we'll uh, get your question answered right away. Plus, we will have this slide distributed uh, in the presentation as well, so we'll take a, a pause. So if you want to. Uh, you know, unmute your mic and ask the question at that point, you can go ahead and do that as well. Okay, so quickly uh, to start out, we're gonna go over a quick overview of Vitrec. Uh, we've been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, we are headquartered in Poway, California, which is right outside of San Diego. Everything that we make is made in that facility in Poway. Uh, we do sell to over 30 countries worldwide. And our key product lines are our high pot electrical safety testers, cable test systems, which is really a subset of the high pot electrical safety testers, our power analyzers, our high voltage meters, and uh, most recently our newest product is our electronic DC load. And we are an ISO 17025 accredited calibration lab. Uh, here are some of the industries that we serve. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here some of the uh, the customers that we deal with. And uh, like I mentioned, here, uh, here are our product lines broken down into uh, four, four main categories. Uh, we've got a little picture there. Uh, <clears throat> so at this point, uh, this is the slide you'll see uh, when we're gonna take a, a quick pause before moving on to the next section. So I don't know if there's any questions yet, but uh, if you if you do have any, you can unmute and uh, ask your question. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll get uh, we'll get moving. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the uh, lighting industry testing and compliance. To start off, let me just get rid of this screen for a second. There we go. Okay, to start off, we're gonna go over a little bit of the history. Uh, back in 1975, the Department of Energy had established uh, mandatory minimum efficiency standards for lighting products. Uh, that included back uh, fluorescent lighting, uh, compact fluorescent lighting, electronic HIDs, induction lamps, and the main part of our conversation today is uh, LED lighting, which is what most of the industry is uh, is working on at this point in time. Uh, we're gonna be talking specifically about a couple of standards, the IES standard LM79 and the NCC 82.16. A little more on the history, there are other uh, voluntary certification programs and initiatives that enable energy saving lighting products to meet additional and targeted sets of efficiency standards and specs. They include Energy Star, which was established in 1992, uh, which uh, talks about minimum luminous efficacy. Uh, there you see some specs there, LED power less than 10 watts, should have 50 lumens per watt, uh, and so on. We got our Design Lights Consortium, which is a utility-based uh, organization. Uh, they talk about solid state lighting, technical requirements 5.1. Again, really, really pushing on the lumens per watt uh, minimum efficacy. Uh, they break it down by product type, so they're a little, kind of compartmentalized on uh, what, how they talk about it. Uh, California Energy Commission, uh, which really pushes standby power uh, and their, their ratings are you know, 200 milliwatts or less. And they talk about power factor where it should be 0.7 or greater. Uh, the LED lighting facts, uh, which is mandatory for Energy Star, uh, any LED type lighting product must have that uh, sample uh, label 
listed on the uh, the package of their of the product. Uh, also, the Municipal Solid State Lighting Consortium, again a Department of Energy uh, group. Now, while all these programs and initiatives have different objectives and requirements, they all have precise measurement and unique submission requirements to assure compliance. Any questions so far? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, overview of the, the testing and compliance uh, for the lighting industry, which in most cases, based on all the documents uh, that, we've, the, that I've shown you and that we're gonna be talking about, I've uh, broken down into four categories, performance, energy efficiency, verification, and safety certification. And the subsets of you know, performance, photometry, and electrical testing, energy efficiency is luminous efficacy, and energy efficiency when we're talking specifically about just an LED driver, for example. On the verification side, consumption, and from safety certification, shock hazards, fire, and health concerns. All right, so the first document we're gonna be talking about in a little bit of detail is our IES, which is the Illuminating Engineering Society, LM79-19. Uh, the 19 is the newest version of that. Uh, again, that indicates it was updated in 2019. And that's an approved method for optical and electrical measurements of solid state lighting products. Uh, both standards and specs are included inside that document. Uh, they talk mainly about optical measurements, lumens, chromacity, luminous flux, and so on. Uh, but for our discussions today, we're going to be talking about electrical power. Uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, the specs you see listed below for AC voltage, RMS current, and so on, uh, are all specified inside LM79-19. Some of those specs have changed. They've gotten a little bit tighter. But more importantly is the confidence interval, or that K equals 2 factor, for voltage, current, power, and power factor. Uh, that has been updated. It used to be K equals 1, which translated into a 68% confidence level that all these specs and accuracies uh, can be met. That changing to K equals 2 has now bumped that up to a 95% uh, confidence level that these specs will be met. Okay, so... Uh, and when we talk about system efficacy, we talk about lumens per watt, uh, which is an overall type of uh, measurement, uh, electrical power coming in and optical power or light power coming out. Uh, if there is not um, an integrated dr uh, LED driver, then driver efficiency becomes the system efficacy spec that, that's being talked about. And then lastly, on the on LM79-19 is our physical and environmental factors and tests, which include temperature, vibration, airflow, and a few others. The other document, compliance document, is our ANSI C82-16. Uh, that has been that was recently updated in 2020, uh, and that is for LED drivers only. Uh, that is also includes the methods of measurement. Both, that includes also standards and specifications. Uh, the LED driver electrical input parameters and output parameters, which are listed there, are what is being tested and what is spec'd out. Uh, one of the important issues there is inrush current on the uh, electrical input parameters and on the output parameters, the energy efficiency. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a little bit more detail as we go on. Uh, also listed in there, which is a very important electrical parameter, is the standby power. Um, and uh, that typically applies to smart lighting products. You know, the products that, for example, either are dimmable or are, um, you know, connected via your internet, internet of things type of, uh, type of devices where, you know, you say, okay, Alexa, go ahead and turn on my, uh, you know, this, the light in my, my family room or whatever it may be. So when those devices are not being used, they're in standby mode, so which means they're actually drawing power, and that is something that, that, that must be measured. Okay, um, on these, uh, to uh, talk a little bit more about standby power, um, the screen, screenshot you're seeing right there is uh, one of the Vitrec PA900 series power analyzer. And uh, one thing that's, that's kind of nice is you'll notice on the right side of that screen, standby power has a little green background on it. That's the active screen. And what we've done is we've actually taken 
uh, standby power spec EN50564, and we've embedded it inside the application. So not only can you do a standby power test, uh, it's got the limits in there as far as uh, you know how much current's being drawn, and it lets you know if you've passed or if the device has passed or failed. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we uh, as we get on as well. Uh, another test that uh, that becomes uh, important is um, harmonics, uh, which is mentioned in both the uh, the LM7919 and the ANSI document. Uh, they talk about harmonics emissions. The screen on the left, again, is a, a capability that's built into the Vitrec PA900 series power analyzers, where we've got the, uh, the ability to measure to those specific EN61000 specs. Uh, and you'll notice the screen on the right, uh, there are different classes, class A, class B, C, D, et cetera. And uh, also we point out that on our harmonic screen, we're actually giving you right there on the screen, the total harmonic dis distortion for both the fundamental and for the whole signal. Any questions so far? Okay, we'll move on a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit, not, not so much about the documentation and the tests that are required, but what type of equipment do you need to be able to perform these tests? So from the performance standpoint, uh, usually on the design side, uh, for the electrical parameters, uh, you use a power analyzer, a ballast analyzer, which is a product that uh, Zytron, which is a company that Vitrec bought um, <clears throat> a few years back, uh, made ballast analyzers, but the, obviously those were just for the, comp the fluorescent market, the compact fluorescent market, uh, and certainly a DC load. And we're gonna get talk about that in a little bit. Uh, energy efficiency, um, a power analyzer is certainly capable of doing that. The ballast analyzer and the DC load can be used as well to do energy efficiency uh, testing and verifications. On the verification side, uh, from a consumption standpoint, again, a power analyzer, ballast analyzer, and a high voltage switch, uh, which is kind of a special product to the Vitrec product line, which we'll, we will go over in a little bit more detail um, in a few screens. Uh, from safety certifications, which is typically on the on the final test side, uh, shock hazards, uh, you'll use a high pot tester and possibly even a high voltage switch, depending how many products you want to be able to test at a specific point in time. All right, so a little bit of the history. Um, I mentioned uh, just a few seconds ago that uh, uh, Zytron, uh, which is part of Vitrec now, uh, has had many years of providing test equipment for the lighting industry. Um, I mentioned the ballast tester, which again is only for uh, fluorescent lighting, the compact fluorescent lighting. Uh, and you, there's a picture of the unit front and back on the right side there. Uh, it was available in one, two, three, or four tube versions. The product is still available as there are some, still some folks testing uh, you know, um, uh, compact fluorescence and fluorescent lighting. Uh, from a photometry standpoint, which is certainly called out in both the ANSI document uh, as well as the LM79-19, uh, we have a portable microspectrometer XT1600, and the Zytron 2801, 2802 power analyzers, which is a legacy box. And the reason why I mention that is the um, the up update to LM79-19 uh, calls out some much tighter specs as far as voltage and power measurement. And where uh, so many folks were using the 2801, 2802 power analyzer uh, previous to this, um, were not able to measure to the standards up to LM7919 now. So that's considered a legacy product. And folks that have been using that are now switching over to either the, uh, the Vitrec PA900 or Zytron 2640, which is indeed the same box. And we're gonna talk a little bit more detail about those specific items uh, on a couple of slides. On the Vitrec side of things, I mentioned uh, previously that uh, to do a lot of this testing, you could use our new electronic DC load, uh, certainly the PA900 series power analyzer. <clears throat> and on the high pot side, our V7X series high pot or our 95X series high pot testers. Basically, the difference between those is the, uh, the V7X is more on the economy side. Maximum test voltage is 5 kV. On the 95X, you got higher test voltage capability, plus the ability to measure currents down as low as in the picoamp range. 
okay, we're going to talk a little bit about our DC electronic load and and how it uh, how it works and how it, it can be used to uh, to do a lot of these uh, these types of tests. Our our load supports testing of power supplies, DC to DC converters, LED drivers, which we're, what we're mainly talking about here, batteries, and a few other things. Um, our DC load it can operate down to zero volts DC and up to 500 volts DC. You say, well, why would I want to operate at zero volts DC? Uh, the reason for that is a lot of the semiconductors being used, uh, especially in LED drivers these days, are very low power supply um, types of devices. They're operating at three volts, five volts, wherever it may be. So to be able to have a load that can perform at the same level as a lot of the semiconductors is very important. Um, another feature that we've, uh, we've we brought over from our power analyzers is our unique, we call it rangeless design, that gives you the ability to cover from microwatts all the way up to kilowatts without switching range and without the accuracy changing during the times when uh, with some of some competition uh, types device type of devices, as you get close to the top end of one range and the low end of the next range, the accuracy kind of kind of gets real high. So uh, we've been able to eliminate that and have basically a flat accuracy spec when it comes to our load and same is going to apply to our power analyzer. Our real world simulation, we have built in what we call an arbitrary mode in our load. And for example, uh, we have an LED driver that, uh, you know, a lot of times you may want to, you may want to turn it on and operate it at full current and power capacity for 20 minutes. That's not a real world type situation in some instances. So what we do is we put arbitrary mode in there, which randomly selects okay, I'll run it at 50% capacity for five minutes. I'll run it at 100% capacity for three minutes. I'll run it at 75% capacity. So you get the idea what arbitrary mode is all about. We've also built in a, um, a web browser into our uh, electronic loads. And that gives you the opportunity to, con to remotely control the device from your, from your office instead of having to run back and forth to the desk simply assign an IP address to the load and you'll be able to control it uh, over your ethernet uh, or your Wi-Fi connection. <clears> That's <throat> uh, an extremely high speed load. Uh, it can change from one, uh, from two different load conditions in as fast as 20 microseconds. And in, on the DC load side, there are six models available, three power ratings, 120, 5, 250, and 500 watts and input voltages from zero to 150 and zero to 500 volts DC. Uh, the load itself uh, is a very unique product. There's, it's three main products in one. Uh, we have an integrated, uh, we have actually four integrated uh, meters for voltage, current, power, and resistance. Uh, there's an oscilloscope, uh, integrated data logger, and um, I've included a link there for, um, for our load, which is a, um, a presentation that uh, my counterpart Glenn Broderick did last week on the load. Uh, so you could go to that, uh, go to our website, check that out, and you can get m even more details on the uh, on the DC load itself. Uh, one thing I want to point out because I'm going to, it's going to come up on the next slide. The picture on the right side is the back panel of the load, and you'll notice right smack in the middle, uh, there's a section there that says external sense, and just keep that in mind as. Uh, get into the next screen. All right, so now let's go back to our documentation, our ANSI C82. And uh, what's called out, uh, it, the, the load can perform what's called out in ANSI C80, C82 with regards to load testing an LED driver. Since they exhibit non-linear characteristics, LED diodes, whether used in series or parallel, can be emulated by the by Trek load. Again, that non-linear characteristic is really a, a, nice, uh, a nice feature and our speed really allows us to be able to do that. LED drivers may be required to operate under constant current, constant voltage, or pulse modulated modes. The Vitrek loads can operate individually or simultaneously. And if you take a look at the, um, that, uh, that link that shows that, uh, Glenn does a nice job in talking about why that may matter to you, where you may need to run all those modes at the same time. Um, the want to bring back your attention to the external voltage sense uh, in the in ANSI C82. Also, wire length should be taken into account to eliminate any added resistance that may occur from longer leads. 
Uh, the Vitrec load can employ a four wire method voltage sense, which is what those connectors were on the back panel uh, in conjunction with the connectors on the front panel. And that gets you your four wire method to uh, make sure your uh, voltage measurement is really dialed in properly. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna move into our power analyzers, our PA900 series. Um, the, the main screen, if you will, which is our power data screen, gives you quite a bit of detail. Um, as you can see, the, um, the box in the upper right says detailed. That gives you the ability to see not only the main parameters, but if you had, for example, a three-phase type uh, situation going on, uh, in this particular screenshot, you're seeing that the voltages on all three phases, the power on all three phases, and obviously the, uh, the combined. So the, um, the types of parameters that are available to you are voltage, current, power, power and power, reactive power, power factor and frequency, and certainly efficiency. Uh, and you can do that from a bunch of different ways. You'll notice that uh, you, know, you can do it for each individual channel. Uh, something called the VPA, which is a Vitrec uh, virtual power analyzer, and the detailed screen I mentioned to you. But the vir virtual power analyzer comes into real play when we start talking about efficiency. Also, um, we have the ability to, to, to eat, instantly change that power data screen to give you the ability to monitor inrush current, which was called out on the input side on the, uh, the ANSI document as far as the LED drivers. So instantaneously, you've got a, a, a digital readout of your inrush current, and also in scope mode, you have the ability to, to constantly monitor your, uh, your input signals, in this case, both voltage and current, uh, with the, uh, the red trace being a, um, uh, the, current, uh, uh, the current inrush. Okay, so how would we do, uh, an, this is an example on how we would do an efficiency measurement uh, with our, or with our PA900 series um, power analyzer. Uh, so what I've got here is I have a, a typical LED driver that's powered with 120 volts AC. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting, bringing in my, uh, my 120 volts, I'm putting that on channel one. Uh, the, voltage in, the voltage is the red, the red and black and the current is the yellow and the blue. Then on channel two, I'm taking the output of the LED driver, uh, which feeds into our luminaire. And uh, channel two is now an output of our LED driver. So now we go into some uh, PA900 VPA configurations. Like I mentioned, VPA stands for Virtual Power Analyzer. And what we're gonna do in this particular case, when you're configuring the PA900 series, uh, you have the ability to construct, we'll call it a virtual power analyzer. In this particular case, since I only have single phase uh, coming in, the, which is the input, of the um, the LED driver, I'm going to I'm going to configure channel one to my VPA number one, and I'm going to call that. Hey, that's my that's my input power, my input voltage, my input current, and so on. The screen over on the right side is now going. I'm now going to configure my VPA number two. That's going to be my output, and I'm going to take my channel two, configure it to VPA number two. Then I could come back to my power data screen, which is the screen in the middle down the bottom. And now I've got my efficiency calculation. So I'm taking my output from the L my LED driver divided by my input of the LED driver and your output, <clears throat> excuse me, output input powers in white, uh, my loss and my efficiency is down below. Okay, other, other items from the consumption standpoint that uh, the PA900 is capable of, uh, of going into uh, is my integrated power, which is my consumed power. My voltage, my current milliamp hours, my power, uh, my apparent power in amp hour, uh, volt amp hours, and my reactive power in bar hours. Okay, now we're gonna move, uh, closing up here, we're gonna move in, into our, our safety equipment. Um, electrical shock and high, high voltage withstanding high pot testers. Like I mentioned, we have our two series, our V7X and our 95X series high pot testers. And I also mentioned a couple slides ago about our 964 high voltage switch. And what the switch does is it enables you to take, in this particular case, either the V7X or the 95X, <clears throat> excuse me, high pot testers, and take the output voltage, you know, your 2 kV, whatever your test voltage is, input it into the front panel on the high voltage switch, 
then the high voltage switch will then take that that one input signal, that high voltage and return signal, and distribute it to maybe either a bunch of different test points on the device under test, or if you wanted to test, let's say, 10 LED drivers, not at the same time, but in sequence, have them all hooked up, and then have the, have your switch go and through test item number one, number two, number three, and so on, all, all the way through item number 10. Now, the other thing I wanna mention is, you could also use the high voltage switch in reverse. Let's say you're doing some of your, uh, your power, uh, power testing with the power analyzer. What you could do is you could have your 10 LED drivers on the output side or the back side of the 964 switch and have it switch independently. And then what it does is it's taking the, the readings from all the LED drivers and sending them back through the 964 switch to the front panel where you can have your power analyzer hooked up. So now you've got a device that works in two directions, your 964, depending on what type of test you're doing, whether it be the, the high pot tester or um, also the power analyzers. Okay, I have uh, taken a picture here of the Vitrec PA900 uh, or Zytron XT2640, which is the item with the red arrow, inserted into a customer's sphere system update to meet the electrical accuracies requirements that are included in LM79-19. Uh, and the reason why you're seeing that there is because like I mentioned, this particular customer was using the, uh, the legacy uh, Zytron 2801 power analyzer, which according to LM79-19 is no longer accurate enough to be doing those types of measurements. So this is just a picture of, the, of our meter um, in, uh, being used. Any questions? Okay. Uh, lastly, I just want to talk about, I uh, mentioned earlier that uh, the Vitrec is an A2LA accredited calibration lab. Um, we do NIST certifications. Uh, we're also an ISO 17025 accredited lab. Um, just like all our products, all our calibrations are done in our Poway facility out uh, in the San Diego area. Uh, our turnarounds are very quick. Our prices are very reasonable. Uh, so if you don't have anyone uh, local to where you may be to want want to do your calculation uh, uh, calibrations, I'm sorry, you can always uh, send the units back to us and uh, we'll take care of that for you as well. Any other questions? I think we're just about done here. Okay, so thanks, folks. Thanks for your time. Uh, again, floor's open. If uh, there are any questions, be more than happy to take them at this point in time. Thanks, Bob. Okay, guys, thanks again. If there are no questions, uh, have a great day. And remember, uh, this will be sent to everyone that's, that's uh, attended. We will also be posting this, uh, what, this webinar PowerPoint presentation on our website. And also, please remember to check out uh, our other uh, webinar presentation on our DC load, which, uh, which Glenn did uh, last week. That is also up and available on our website as well. Okay, thanks folks, have a great day and uh, we'll be talking to you soon.